I don't want to be on the news, dog. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. How often do you meet underage girls online? Probably 10, 15. 10, 15. Underage girls you've met online. You say, if anyone ever knew about this, I would go to jail. He confessed to everything. He knew that she was underage. Oh, no. He brought his son with him. He's got his child with him. Y'all want to interview? Okay, how y'all doing? Tonight, the strangest parade of suspects you've ever seen. NBC again. On To Catch a Predator. We've been investigating the national epidemic of grown men using the internet to solicit underage teens for sex. As more and more parents become aware of the dangers, so have lawmakers in Washington. Good evening, I'm Stone Phillips. And I'm Ann Curry. Both houses of Congress have now passed a bill to create the first nationwide registry for sex offenders, which in many states includes online sex predators. This time we take our hidden cameras to Florida. We thought we'd seen and heard just about everything, but what we found there surprised even our own Chris Hansen. A reminder, some of what you'll see is explicit. Hey, come on in! I made some cookies! Hello? They're on the table! Hi. Take a seat! This 49-year-old man and the teenager talking to him have never met before. He probably believes she's the 15-year-old he's been chatting online with for the last week and a half. Change my shirt real quick, but just come in and watch some TV. I'll be right there. Okay. What he doesn't know is she's really a 19-year-old actress we hired to be a decoy, and he has just walked into a Dateline hidden camera investigation. Come on in over here. Have a seat there. Hungry? How does it taste? Great. Wow. These are home baked. Do you want time to finish your cookie or? Um, not really. Okay, so you're good. If I ask you a couple questions. It's the latest in our continuing series of investigations into online sex predators. For the first time, we're in the South, Fort Myers, Florida. Hilton Daniels is Fort Myers' chief of police. I've had a lot of parents call me and say, hey, I've caught my kid uh, talking to someone over the Internet. Uh, I've had my kids slip out of the house and go meet someone. What do I do? While searching for a way to help parents and children in his community, Chief Daniel says he saw one of our previous broadcasts and had an idea. We decided, well, let's get a hold of perverted justice and have them teach us how to do this operation. We're trying to make contact and get an update right now. Perverted justice, an online watchdog group Dateline has been working with during each of our computer predator investigations. Its members are experts at pretending to be kids online and on the phone. Yeah, you sound nice. Dateline hired perverted justice members to do what they've been doing for the last four years. Chat online with men looking for minors, hoping to meet the teens for sex. The members go into chat rooms and on social networking sites like MySpace and TeenSpot using profiles of young teens. Sometimes the decoys act eager about having sex. He thinks he's talking to the girl. Since perverted justice members want to see these predators arrested, they were more than willing to help out the Fort Myers Police Department. Perverted justice says, hey, not only will we teach you, we'll come down and do it for you. So the next thing I know, we're setting up the sting operation. His left hand is in his pocket. Frag, his screen name from Perverted Justice, worked out a plan with Chief Daniel's officers. Once a potential predator makes a date online for sex with a minor, the chat logs will be sent to detectives and prosecutors who are staked out in the guest house behind our house. Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the State Attorney's Office, they were reviewing the uh, chat logs to make sure that this person had already violated state statute. We just now got the child log on, yeah. We'll take a look at it as soon. Under Florida law, it's a crime for an adult to solicit sex with a minor online. Coming to the house was kind of like the icing on the cake. For our latest investigation, we've come to this lovely home in an upscale neighborhood. There are five cameras outside, including one hidden in a palm tree. It covers the street from both sides, able to spot a potential predator's car a block before he arrives. Knocking on the back door, call out. Hey, come on in! As for the cameras inside the house, there are eight. Coming your way, move. Watch this man. He's in the kitchen. From the He's moment the he walks in the door, his every move is caught on tape, although he doesn't know it yet. 
He's coming into the living room. Chris has him. What are you doing here today? Is this some kind of setup or something? What do you I mean, mean? I'm just on my way to the beach. He's Michael Willis, screen name generic white male. He's almost 50 years old, and he's been chatting online with a girl who calls herself Jolanda and who says she's 15. He lies to her about his age, typing, I'm 30. You probably don't want me around you. I'm cute, though. Built good. Then he says, We'd have to keep us a secret because of the age difference. Younger girls like you don't come along often. I'd want you again and again. Then he sends an online picture of his penis to the girl who told him she was 15. And how did you meet her? Well, of course, online. You act like I should know that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a common thing now. Just to meet young girls online? No, well, meet any women online. Then I remind generic white male that Jolanda told him she was 15. Before. What? No way. You know, I have the transcript of your conversation with Jolanda. You know what, I don't want this cookie. I just want to get to the beach. Come here, just one second, sir. But generic white male won't be going to the beach today. As he heads out the back, he stumbles off the porch right into the arms of the Fort Myers Police Department. The police quickly take him down to the ground. In Florida, where it's relatively easy to get a permit to carry a concealed weapon, these officers aren't taking any chances. The best thing to do is, as quickly as possible, was to get this person on the ground with their hands behind him and handcuffed. He's taken away in an unmarked police vehicle and brought to this transfer station. Generic white male's car is searched. Um, there's some condoms and uh, things like that in there. And he's put into a marked police car and taken to jail. The next morning, he's brought before a judge, and bail is set. So it'll be a composite bond of $40,000. That's all. Get up on four. The gold car coming down is our boy. After previous investigations in four different states, we've seen and heard some strange things. But even we were surprised at what we found here in Florida. All I got to say is ain't no, nothing going on here, dude. Nothing funny going on here. Coming up, a suspect comes knocking while his sister and her kids wait in the car. How will he explain that one? Your poor sister is waiting outside with two babies in the car? Yeah. When To Catch a Predator continues. Our 13 cameras are in place and rolling, including one high up in a palm tree. We're able to spot a potential predator's car long before he gets to our house. But this is our boy. The man walking in our back door is 21-year-old David Schumacher, screen name Freebird72000. He's been chatting online with a decoy posing as a young teen named B. Knock, knock. Hey, come on in. Our 19-year-old actress, the decoy playing bee, invites him in. You can try one of my cookies. They're so good. Did you make them? Yeah, I made them myself. All right, I eat one. I like chocolate chip. Online, he invites the girl, who told him she was 14 and a virgin, to a birthday party. And from his online chat, it appears he has his sights on a party for two. I want to be your first, baby. Okay. You going to put my in your mouth? Because I like that. I guess I can try it. Just let me drive, baby. I'll show you heaven. <laughs> he goes on to talk about having different kinds of sex with the virgin, and then gets almost poetic. Do you want to make love or for your first time? What's the difference? It's just raw passion, and making love is a connection of bodies, I guess. Freebird72000 also mentions online that he's going to bring marijuana. Did you bring some green? No, we're going to smoke some though when we get some. Cookies are good munchies. Now, can you tell me parents rich? What do they do for a living? Hey, why don't you have a seat right over there? Good, how are you? What's happened? Like so many of the men who walk into this house, the man sits and answers questions. He can't figure out if I'm the girl's father or a police officer. And remember, he has no idea he's being videotaped. What's going on? What's, you tell me what's going on. You a dad or something? What are you doing here? I'm David. How you doing? David, I'm Chris. Nice to see you. How's everything? Yeah. Chilling. Birthday party. You said the girl here was going to go with you to the birthday party. Who are you? I'll get to that in a minute. All right. What's your date's name for the party? B. B. And how old is B? I don't know. He didn't really tell me. 
But she did tell him. Online, she typed her age, 14, female, South Florida. And he said, what would your parents say about you talking to someone as old as me? Then Freebird seems to worry, I'm a cop. You seem like law enforcement. I happen to know law enforcement. You do. So you're an expert in this area. No, then. no, I'm just saying, you you come off as law enforcement. Really? So. You know how you come off? How's that? Somebody who's very nervous. Somebody who came over here to have sex with a 14-year-old girl. 14-year-old? I read him some of what he said online. Are you sexy naked? Have you ever played with yourself? You gonna put my in your mouth? And I like Because I like dirty. that, I'll teach you. And you trying to say? I'm trying to say it makes it look like yeah. you came here. I didn't come here. I can't pick her up. To have sex with an underaged girl. We were in a role playing chat room, dude. And what role were you playing exactly here? That's, people play roles, man. In time, never ask role playing. People just talk. Oh my God, dude. Is this, is this some kind of hold up, man? You got a warrant? Because, I mean, if the girl don't want to come and if you got a problem. A warrant? What are you, a defense this, lawyer now? I'm saying, man. You don't got no cause to hold me. I'm, I got no problem sitting here to talk to you. Right? Okay. He sticks to the story that he's here to take the girl to a party. But it turns out he didn't come here alone. Waiting outside in the car is his sister and her two young children. He says his sister was going to drive them to the party. Yeah. And your poor sister's waiting outside with two babies in the car? Yeah. So because you had to come over here and have sex with a 14 year old. I'm not. I didn't come over here and have sex. You, why would you put that? I didn't come over here to have sex. I come over here to get the girl and go to the party, dude. We learn his sister apparently didn't know he was trying to meet an underage girl. Later, you'll find out what happens when I tell him I'm with Dateline. Nothing funny going on here. There are more potential predators to confront. As you can see, the palm tree cam picks up another man headed our way. This time, he's riding a motorcycle. He's parking right by the door. Instead of coming in right away, he stays outside and smokes a cigarette. Our actress tries to get him to come inside. Call him. He's getting nervous. Hey, come on in! All right, you just put a cigarette in the trash. He's heading towards the door. He's 45-year-old Dennis Ramsey, a truck driver, screen name Daddy for You. He drove four hours to meet a girl who told him online she was 14, home alone, and willing to have sex with him. Online, daddy for you says, I just met you, I like you, and the world says it's wrong because I'm older than you. Then later, under a different screen name, Bluegrass Rules, he brings up the idea of having sex with her in a roundabout way. I said we can't have sex, but that's up to you. It might be okay. If we do, you have to assure me no one will ever find out. And where are you? Oh, hey! I'm just picking out a jacket to wear on the bike. Just take a seat. This is quite a place. Quite like it. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good. Why don't you have a seat right over that uh, chair? Oh, man. Thanks for smoking outside. Well, go ahead. Please have a seat. What are you up to? Well, I knew this was going to happen. He tells me he has kids of his own and drove four hours simply to warn our teenager about the dangers of talking to, to strangers on the internet. You know, you, I came to let her know that I, you know, when you do that you can be anybody. So you came to help her out out of the goodness of your heart? You know, that sounds stupid, but maybe you could say that, I don't know. And what about his chat log? You ask her what size her boobs are. She says 32B, you say yummy. And again, you get somewhat suspicious. You say, you're not trying to set me up, are you? Are you a cop? If anyone ever knew about this, I would go to jail. I can't tell you how ashamed I am. And as you'll see later, he'll be even more ashamed when he finds else? out he's going to be on national television. But first, there are more men about to arrive for their date with a young teen. Some hey, won't you? stay long. No, no, sir. Wait a minute. And one man wants to take his date for a ride. Come here. And coming up a little later tonight, one of the most profoundly troubling cases we've seen. A father brings his own small child along on a date to meet an underage teen and walks into a confrontation he never expected. I gotta tell you something, and I'm gonna tell you just straight up right now. To Catch a Predator continues in a moment. He's coming, Emily. Hold on. Wave, 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 wave. Oh, he saw you. He saw you. He's hitting the brakes and backing up. During our undercover operations, it's not uncommon for potential predators to appear hesitant about walking in the door. He's trying to wave her out to the street. No way. 
but we've never seen anyone like this man. He's bringing his car all the way back, guys. He pulls in around back and starts asking the decoy, our actress playing a young teen, to come outside. No, you come here. It's almost 4 o'clock in the morning when 44-year-old Thomas Moffat, screen name Moff 1960, pulls up to our house. He's a maintenance engineer for the Boca Raton Resort, a married man with three children. He drove more than two hours to meet a girl named Tony who said she was 15. Really, it's a decoy from perverted justice. I'm trying to hit on you and you're laughing at me? No, I'm not. Okay, good. Am I freaking you out? Why would you freak me out? Because I'm 44 and I'm hitting on you. So would you ever fool around with an old guy like me? Once they set up an actual date to meet at her house, Moff 1960 makes his plans very clear. Okay, how about after I come in, I'll strip. <laughs> For reals? Sure, if you want me to. You're kidding me. Nope. You can take your clothes off in the laundry room if you want to. He finally gets out of his car, but won't come any closer than the back step. And you said you were going to do something for me in the laundry room. Were you lying to me? Mm -mm. Are you going to back out on me? Because mm -mm. that's what I feel like you're going to do now. Cautious. Moff 1960 senses something different about the girl in the house. Can you come here, please? I'm right here. Please? In fact, something is different. Our actress is not actually the decoy who sent Moff 1960 a photograph of herself and spoke to him on the phone. That was a member of Perverted Justice. You haven't acted this way when we've talked before. Oh, really? Well, talking in person is a little different than talking online. And you don't sound the same on, in person as you did on the phone. Well... Oh, your picture looks different, too. This odd conversation goes on for half an hour. At one point, he tells her to show him proof that she is who she says she is. Get your library card. He paces outside, peeking in the window. When the decoy comes back without her library card, he tries to convince her to get in his car and go to Walgreens. Where's the Walgreens at? This is ridiculous. I'm going to bed. Okay. As we told you earlier, Fort Myers police officers are staked out in the guest house. So as the man tries to get in his car, get out! Get down! He's arrested. Get down! Get down! Get down! Get down! Put your hand behind your back. So we never get to tell him he's going to be on Dateline. And he wasn't the only one. Okay, guys, he's out of the car. He's walking really, really fast. This 24-year-old, Elazar Henson, screen name Importuner81, is here after making a date online with a girl posing as a 13-year-old. He told her he'd bring marijuana. Did you bring the pot? He begins to look around and appears to spot our crew upstairs. Hi. Yeah, did you bring the pot? No. And he takes off. Go take him. Take him. Here comes another man who doesn't stick around very long. He's coming up the driveway. He's walking fast. He's 43-year-old Freddy Fernandez, screen name Latin Hawk 63. He's been having an X-rated online chat with a decoy posing as a 15-year-old. Like several men in our investigations, he even sent her a picture of his penis. Hey, how are you? All right. Do you have a seat right in that chair? For... No, no, sir. Wait one minute. Get down! Now! He's walking up the driveway. And here's another man who doesn't realize he's walked into our investigation. This case of a man who calls himself Pepe is a first for us. Hey, do it again. Hey, Pepe, come on in. He's 41-year-old Jose Falcon, screen name Florida in Miami. He's been chatting online with a girl who said she was 12 and a virgin. He lies about his age, saying he's 27. And he says he has plans to teach the 12-year-old how to have sex. He describes in X-rated detail what he wants to do to her. The picture sent to him is of our actress. Now she's trying to get him in the house. Do it again. Hey, Pepe, are you there? Hey, come on in. Come on in, Pepe. It takes our decoy a while to get him inside. And when she does, I come out. Mark, please have a seat right here. No, 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 no. I... He indicates to me no, he's to deaf. Here. Oh, it's okay. okay. Can you read something? And then heads for the door. Looks like this guy's deaf, guys. Get down! Get down! 
As for the rest of the potential predators who do stick around, they're full of excuses. I'm looking for work and stuff. But what will they say when they find out they're going to be on Here's national that. television? How y'all do, NBC? Red was the color of his shirt. It was also the color of his face. Coming up, how will he react when he's nabbed by police? When To Catch a Predator continues. Welcome back to our latest investigation into online sex predators. Tonight we're in Florida where we've rented a home in an upscale neighborhood and set it up with 13 hidden cameras. So far we've seen all kinds of men driving up to the house to meet up with someone posing as an underage teen home alone. Now another one is on the way and soon all these men will learn what's really happening. They're being exposed on national television. Again, Chris Hansen. Parking out front. He's out of the vehicle. The man in the black hat is 31-year-old Thomas Coffin, a self-employed handyman. He's here after making a date online for sex with a girl pretending to be 14. He tells her, I am into young girls. I like them better than the older girls. And he goes further, admitting he's done this before. When the decoy types, how young have you dated, though, he says 14. Trying to find this place was hard. Online, he tells the girl posing as a 14-year-old several times that he loves her. He also makes it clear he's coming to the house to have sex with her. He even sends her a picture of himself naked. Hey, how are you? But when I show up, he that, explains it's all a big misunderstanding. What's up? I'm looking for work and stuff. Looking for work and stuff? Yeah. And what kind of work were you looking for here exactly? Uh... I do blacktop sealing. And what brought you to this address exactly? Did the owner of the house call you for no, blacktop work? Or? I, I put ads out and stuff. Really? And did you bring all your blacktop stuff with you? And just come down just to look at it. Oh, just to look at it. Now, do you want to start the story again? What do you mean? Tell the truth. I talked to a lot, of, lot, lot of people. So you weren't really here to give an estimate for a blacktop job? No. That was a lot. Sorry about that. He also seems sorry he sent right. that picture. It's That's appropriate? No. To send to a 14-year-old girl. He doesn't deny he sent the picture, okay. but does I he know it's a possible thing. crime? No, Do you know that this is illegal to send something like this to someone you think is underage? Do you get that? Yeah. Oh, it won't happen again, I can tell you that one. Then he tries to explain it all away as one big computer glitch. I shut down my computer and stuff and my computer's messed up. Your computer, so it just, what, magically typed itself no. like a player piano? No, it's messed up, I'm saying. I got a virus in it and stuff. Well, what's messed up is this conversation. So what was your intent today? Just to babysit until she's no, old enough to... just come over and say hi. That was it. But how will he explain that online the decoy said. asked him to bring condoms? And he just happens to have them Put in the his table. shirt pocket. I always have them on. You always carry them right there in your pocket? Well, yeah, it was, I sit on the end getting uh, crushed. Do you see how this looks, Thomas? Yeah, it looks bad. And it looks bad for all the men you've seen walking in our door. I don't like myself right now at all, man. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who meet teens on the Internet. Like most of the men who find out they've been caught in a Dateline undercover investigation, this man, the 45-year-old truck driver who made plans online to meet a girl who told him she was 14, has nothing more to say. You're obviously free to walk out that door that you came in. I will do that. Thank you. But he won't get very far. Get down! Get your ass on the ground now! Fort Myers police are ready to make the arrest. Do everything you're told, you will not get hurt. He's taken away in an unmarked police car and brought to a transfer station. Spread your legs out. Where he's searched, put in another car, and transported to jail. Meanwhile, back at our house, another man thinks he has his own solution to being exposed on national television. Remember the 21-year-old who duped his sister into driving him to meet a girl who said she was 14? Okay. We're doing a story she on look adults to me. who try to meet kids on the internet. <laughs> hey, man, I don't want, I don't want to um, be on, on the news, you feel me? We are filming. I don't want to be on the news, dog. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. 
Now, if there's anything else you want to tell me... He quickly comes up with a disguise. And as far as interviews go, this may be a television first. All I got to say is, ain't no, nothing going on here, dude. Nothing funny going on here. Nothing funny going on. No. The girl, if the girl's really 14, then I know, but... She told you she was 14. See, we were in the role-playing chat room, dude. You know how many times I hear that? Am I being held up here? You're not being held up. You're free to walk out that same door you dude, walked in. Do y'all want to interview? Hey, how y'all doing? Okay. How y'all doing? NBC? NBC. NBC. And you're... Chris, Chris Hansen. All right, Dateline listen. NBC. Let me, let, me, let me explain something to NBC for a second here. I, I don't know what kind of um, rap y'all got on, on people, but maybe y'all can get the whole story because this girl is in a role-playing chat room. Whose house is this? Can I smoke with you? No, you can't smoke with I didn't think so. You can smoke outside. All right, dude. Whatever. He decides to go out the front door. Run into the car. Move. But that doesn't stop detectives from catching him and placing him under arrest. And when he shows up at the transfer station, police search him, and he keeps talking. Y'all thought y'all was going to get some green. Hey, NBC, two words, role-playing, chat room, dude, because the girl was role-playing, man. We checked with perverted justice and were told he met the decoy in a Florida romance room, not a role-playing chat room. What's that for your, um, for your pedophile thing? Yeah. And the transcripts of his online chats and phone calls were enough for police to charge him with a felony. Yeah. Good, because when, well, when, when I get found not guilty, I'm sue somebody. Even after he's placed in the police car, he goes on talking. I'm not, I'm not guilty, man. I, do I look like I need 14-year-old girls? I don't need 14-year-old girls, dude. I got all kind of girls. And he has even more to say when he's brought to the jail. NBC again. How y'all doing, NBC? It turns out there was at least one thing he said earlier that turned out to be true. I happen to know law enforcement. You do see. He has quite a long rap sheet. In 2002, he led police on a high-speed chase in a stolen car. He was also convicted of grand theft and trying to sell the stolen goods. And twice, he was convicted of battery. That's okay. That's okay. Back at the transfer station, police are searching suspects' vehicles. I think it's the coffin 1012. This car belongs to the 31-year-old man in the black hat. He was planning on meeting a girl who said she was 14. He had uh, some condoms were in there. The address of the, uh, of the location was on there on a piece of paper, so we took all that as evidence. This car belongs to the man who ran after spotting our crew. He showed up to meet a girl who said she was 13. Located uh, notebook with some address to the uh, target house. Cell phone, two condoms, Kodak Fun Saver camera, and three adult magazines. And this car belongs to the 45-year-old who was too afraid to come into the house and meet a girl who told him she was 12. That's not right. Like an over-the-counter bag or something. What kind of effort did it take for the police to handle an operation this big? Chief Hilton Daniels is the man in charge. We had uh, 50 something police officers. We had uh, officers from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and we had attorneys from the state attorney's office directing the takedowns. And it was the interrogations according to Chief Daniels that proved to be their best evidence. They confessed to exactly what was read to them off the, uh, off the chat logs. Hello. Remember this man, Michael Willis, screen name generic white male? He's the 49-year-old who came to meet a girl who said she's 15. He was the one who threw the cookie. You know what? I don't want this cookie. And left. I have some more questions for you. he could walk away from Dateline's interview, he couldn't walk away from Detective Jennifer Ladelfa. Confessed to everything that he had um, solicited her over the Internet, stated that he knew that she was underage, and that he'd come down here to make his fantasy come to fruition. While for some men it might take getting arrested and then being interrogated before confessing, back at the house you're about to meet two men who admit doing things you won't believe. I had nude pictures of her on my computer. Coming up, it's not the first time our next suspects say they've targeted underage teens. How often do you meet underage girls online? Probably 10, 15. 10, 15. Underage girls you've met online. The Catch a Predator continues in a moment.
He's pulling in the driveway. Go out and throw a little wave at him. This is 27-year-old Eric Thornton, screen name Balin79. He drove four hours thinking he was going to meet a girl who told him online she was 14. At one point during the chat, he gets on his webcam and masturbates and types, did you see it? The decoy says, not really, too dark, and he types back, shoot, and then brags about what he had just done. You lose. Now, he's in our house. Hey, come on in. All right. I made some chocolate chip cookies and I left them on the table. Just take a seat. I'll be right there. That's fine. No problem. Mmm, these are good. You like them? Mmm. I made them all by myself. I can't wait to see you. I know. Online, he said he'd bring alcohol and condoms, so the actress asks him about it. What kind of alcohol did you bring? Um, I brought Absolute Citron, I brought Mandarin Orange, I brought a shot of Jägermeister, I got, uh, Bush. Wow. And, yeah. um, I don't know, I could get some more if I need to. Did you bring condoms? Mm-hmm. Food. Well, with all that, it sounds like you've got a pretty big night planned, huh? Yep. Two different kinds of vodka. Mm-hmm. Brought some beer. And what else? That's it. That's it. Condoms. So what was your plan here tonight? My plan? Just to hang out. To hang out. Mm -hmm. And you thought it was okay as a 27-year-old to come here and meet a 14-year-old with alcohol and condoms? No, no, no. Then why did you do it? Because I, I just thought it was like a good idea. A good idea? Turns out, he says, this isn't the first time he's gone after underage teens. How often do you meet underage girls online and set up a visit? Not that much. Ballpark it for me. Um, probably 10, 15. 10, 15. Have you met them in person? Mm-hmm. And what did you do when you met them in person? Uh, just... Well, actually, I didn't really meet him. Like, he keeps like changing his story. Finally, he admits he has a problem when it comes to chatting with underage girls online. I've, I've went to counseling many, many times. So based upon the fact that you're here to meet a 14-year-old, that counseling isn't working out too well, is it? I don't know. It's possible that the counseling isn't working because he says he stopped going about five months ago. Did you plan on spending the night? Yes, I, 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 I wanted to spend the night, but I didn't want to do anything too graphic until I actually met that person. Well, what do you think should happen to you, Eric? Just go home and learn from this. That's but he's I'm not going to get off that easy. It's time to tell him who I am. I'm Chris Hansen from Dateline NBC, and we... He doesn't run when he sees the cameras. Instead, he decides to give any potential predator this advice. Just... Whatever you do, do not get into underage people at all. I feel regretful. I feel horrible that I did this. But that heartfelt speech, those words of wisdom, won't help him this time around. Please get down the ground! Get down the ground! Like all the other men you've seen, he's patted down, photographed, and his car is searched. We got a sheet from beer that Ezra found in his, in his pocket. Front pocket. And off to jail. Most of the men who came to our undercover house were chatting online with decoys for a week or more. Red pickup's coming back. But not this potential predator. He's 48-year-old Donald Morrison, screen name Donnie1957, male. He started the online chat with a girl posing as a 15-year-old at 8 p.m. this very same night. Wasting no time, he types, I want to meet you and fool around. Are you up to meeting tonight, hon? Then he makes a plan to come to her house around 11 p.m. He's walking up. The guy's in the driveway for those of you. It's now 11.30, and look who's walking up the driveway. He's opening the door. Hello. Hey, come on in. We got a big house. Try one of my cookies. They're so good. Chocolate chip's my favorite. Mine, too. When I make them for Christmas, I make about 10 dozen of them. Whoa. Why so many? Because we usually got family in from the up north. We had like 14 of us here this year. Holy cow. Can I get you a glass of milk to go along with those cookies? Sure. What's going on? 
I don't know, I just was talking to her and she said, come down and visit her. Just like our other visitor, he admits he has a problem when it comes to underage girls. I have a compulsion just to, with her younger women, just meeting them. I haven't, I've met about a dozen of them online. And so this is something you do frequently? No, I haven't done it in, well, actually, I haven't done it since I moved here to Florida. And where did you live before? Texas. And so you did this a lot in Texas? Mm hmm Did you ever get in trouble for it? Yeah. Yeah? Well, I got in trouble because I met a girl in Michigan. And how old was that girl? Seventeen. And what trouble did you get in there? Well, her grandfather tried to charge me with something they couldn't do anything. So they arrested me for possessing child pornography because I had nude pictures of her on my computer. They ended up dropping the charges. And how did you get the naked pictures of the teenage girl? I met her in Michigan. And I took them. You took the pictures of the girl, mm -hmm. and then you put them on your computer? On my computer, yeah, they were digital pictures. After the 48-year-old asks the decoy online if she's looking for sex, he brings up the possibility that she might be a cop. What made you think that this might be a police operation? I don't know, just after seeing all these things on Dateline, you know, I don't, I, like I said, this is the first time I've done it since I've been here. So you've seen all the Dateline stories? Mm hmm And what did you think of those stories? I thought some of them were pretty, were pretty bad. I, I mean, I saw the one where they were coming over for sex with boys and stuff like that, you right. know. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not, in, in, I'm not really into, you know, pedophilia. You know, this might be, this is probably considered that. And I know this is probably going to be on Dateline too. So go ahead and put it on. Well, you know, who I am. Yeah. I'm Chris Hansen with Daylight Right, NBC. I understand. I know who I recognize from the voice. And everything you've just said and done has all been recorded. Okay. And if you have anything else you'd like to tell us, we'd like to hear it. Just saying that, you know, I shouldn't have done it. I mean, I'm, this is something I normally don't, don't go out and do. I want you to be honest with me. If I wasn't here tonight, and a young girl was, who was alone and willing to have sex, what do you think would have happened? Probably would have happened. Probably would have had sex. You yes. would have gone ahead and done it. Probably, yes. I mean, I could say honestly, yes, it probably would have if she would have, if she would have you know, said, hey, let's go for it. And you don't see anything wrong with that? Yes, I do see things, things wrong with it, but I have lack of judgment. And here's a first. Before he leaves, Thank he you, actually thanks Thank me. You. Thank you for bringing you know, kicking me in the pants and setting me straight, Chris. He leaves through the back door and the police are waiting. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! On the ground! He's taken to the transfer station. When he gets to the jail, he goes into diabetic shock. He's taken in handcuffs to the hospital where he's treated and then brought back to jail. The next day, he appears before a judge. Donald Morrison, you're charged with sex offense against a child. Your Honor, may I ask a question? No, sir. Okay. When we return, if you're outraged over what you've seen so far, watching these suspects, you'll be saddened by what you witness next. What this man did stunned everyone who saw it. Oh, no. Oh, my God. A father brings his own five-year-old son to the house when To Catch a Predator continues. Kelly's backing out now. He's After conducting four internet predator investigations in four different states, you'd think we'd be prepared for anything. He's getting out of the car. But what happens here in Florida shocks us all. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. He brought his son with him. He brought his son with him. He's got his child with him. He's a 40-year-old married man, Clifford Wallach, screen name Photofix. He's here to meet a boy who told him online he was 14. Dell from Perverted Justice, want, posing as the boy, to talks to Photofix on the phone. He said, I like oral all aspects. I said, giving or receiving. He said, both. I said, cool. He said, you up for that? I said, sure. Coming in the back door. Holding his son's hand, the 40-year-old walks into the house. Where'd you go? Because we don't want to scare the little boy, we immediately tell the man what's going on. I gotta tell you something, and I'm gonna tell you just straight up right now. Yeah. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Okay. We're doing a story 
on adults eating children. And since you have your child here, I'm not going to pursue this. Okay. But I think you know what you are doing here, don't you? No, I was just going to take some of lunch. My point is, because your child is here, I think it'd be best if you just went okay. ahead and left. Yeah, I agree. I never going to do this again. Since the police know the man has his son with him... Sir, right there. You come here. You come here. Let go of the child. A female officer quickly takes the little boy and whisks him away so he doesn't have to further witness his father's arrest. Please give me my son, please. He's taken away in handcuffs and brought to the transfer station. Please, I want to stay with my son. That's not an option for now, sir. I didn't do nothing wrong. I was okay, only going to take the lunch. I can't feel my hands, please. The police contact the boy's mother at work, tell her what's going on, but she comes and gets him. You want to get a drink? Yeah? Meanwhile, the dad is taken to jail. Photographed and put behind bars. He and most of the other men in Florida have pleaded not guilty. While his story is upsetting, in the driveway. The story of a man you'll meet next week is downright bizarre. That's him right there. He's pulling in the driveway. This potential predator comes in the house, whips off his clothes, and proceeds to search for a young teen. You want to explain yourself? And we'll tell you what he planned to do with that teenager. You're naked. There's a 14-year-old girl. You're chasing a cat around. You've got Cool Whip. And you can find information on what you can do to protect children from Internet predators on our website. Just log on to dateline.msnbc.com. That's all for now. I'm Stone Phillips. For Ann Curry and all of us at NBC News, thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Please let him out! Get him down! You show up with beer, you show up with condoms. You're naked, there's a 14 year old girl, you're chasing a cat around, you've got Cool Whip. He's in the kitchen coming towards the living room. The issue here is not gay or straight, the issue here is adult child. The one that bothered me the most was the guy that showed up with rope and duct tape. You are every parent's worst nightmare. Suspected predators caught on tape. And one is caught going way too far. Tonight on To Catch a Predator. They're online and on the prowl, grown men targeting children on the internet. Good evening and welcome to Dateline. I'm Stone Phillips. And I'm Ann Curry. This month, millions of people have been watching our investigations into computer sex predators, among them some of the suspected predators themselves. And what's most surprising, even knowing that they may be walking into a sting, is not enough to keep some of them away. Tonight, we're back in Florida, where we started our investigation last week. And now there are new suspects and new dangers. Again, we want to remind you that some of what you'll see is explicit. Here's Chris Hansen. You seem like law enforcement. I happen to know law enforcement. You do. So you're an expert in this area. No, no, I'm just saying you, you come off as law enforcement. Really? So. You know how you come off? How's that? Somebody who's very nervous. Somebody who came over here to have sex with a 14-year-old girl. 14-year-old? Like all our previous investigations, the potential predators here in Fort Myers, Florida, are keeping us busy. Is this some kind of setup or something? While some are surprisingly candid... They arrest me for possessing child pornography because I had nude pictures of her on my computer. They end up dropping the charges. Others tell us stories we've heard before. Just more to say hi. That was it. And one man does something so brazen, you have to see it to believe it. You want to explain yourself? But they all have something in common. Every one of them chatted online about having sex with a person posing as a young teen, made a date to meet, and then showed up at our undercover house. A number of these individuals traveled quite a ways. Hilton Daniels is the chief of police in Fort Myers. I believe the furthest one drove 223 miles to Fort Myers to have sex with a child. Chief Daniels says it's frightening to think what would have happened if there really had been a child home alone. Anything could have happened in that house. The person would have 
cleaned up and drove away and as law enforcement agencies we would never have known who that person was Made the turn. but fortunately there are no real children in the house instead there are decoys members of an online watchdog group called perverted justice dateline hired them as consultants to do what they normally do set up profiles of 12 to 15 year olds and in this case go into florida chat rooms and wait to be contacted by a grown-up once an adult starts messaging, a decoy will often pretend to be home alone and willing to have sex. He has a case of perhaps Bud Light or something. Over the course of three days, men come knocking on our door, and our 13 hidden cameras record their every move. From the minute they turn onto our street until they walk into our living room, cameras are rolling, but the potential predators have no idea. There he goes. He heard you. He's coming. He's coming fast. This man shows up to a house he's never been to before to keep a date with a girl he's never met. He walks into the backyard and knocks on the wrong door. No one answers, so he makes a call. No one answers the phone either. Finally, he hears our decoy and heads inside. Hey, I just had to change my shirt real quick, but just come in and watch some TV. I'll be right there. Where you at? I'm just going to change my shirt real quick. Although perverted justice members are actually the decoys who conduct the chats online, we hired this actress to pretend to be the girl alone in our house. She looks the part of a minor, but she's really 19. Sit down on the chair and eat some cookies. I just have to change real quick. The man who's come into our house is 23-year-old Raul Antonio Brenes, screen name Antonio69929, an assembly worker. He met a girl posing as a 14-year-old online and asks her if she's ever had anal sex. She says no, and then he types, would you ever do it? He also asks her, how many rounds can you last? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Would you be able to have sex and take a break until you get tired, or could it be an all-night thing? I guess we'll see. <laughs> I just want to make sure you can handle me. To keep his date, he actually got on a bus and rode across the state of Florida. But instead of finding a minor alone... He meets me. Sure. Why don't you have a seat right over there, please? Online, he told the girl he'd bring alcohol and spend the night. And look, he's brought beer and an overnight bag. How was your bus ride? Good. How long were you on the bus? Well, sir. How many hours? About, about four. And what else did Antonio 69929 bring with him? Did you bring condoms with you? Some of my bag I always bring with me. You always bring condoms? Yes, sir. You show up with beer, you show up with condoms, after a sexually charged online conversation at a home where you believe a 14-year-old girl is alone for the weekend. You say, are you sure you can handle me? You ask her if she's cruel about having sex with you. I'm guilty of whatever is there, sir. I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm guilty of whatever is there. And what could he be guilty of in the state of Florida? Using the internet to attempt to solicit a minor for sex, a felony. Not appropriate at all, sir. Why did you do it? Just, just me being dumb. What do you think should happen to you, Antonio? I think I should get a death penalty, sir. What well, he about. won't be getting the death penalty, but he'll find out shortly he does have a date before a judge. I'm uh, printing out right now everything. Perverted Justice has been sending the sexually explicit online chat logs between its decoys and the potential predators to the Fort Myers Police Department and state prosecutors. They're staked out in the guest house behind our house. In the case of Antonio 69929, there's enough evidence for an arrest. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to meet children on the internet. So after I tell him he's going to be on Dateline, so you're free to leave. Get on the ground! Get down! Get down. He gets arrested. And taken away in an unmarked police car. Then he's brought to this transfer station where he's searched. You have any ID on you? And he's taken to jail. The next morning he appears before a judge and bail is set. There is probable cause as to all charges. There'll be a $40,000 bond composite. His story is only one in a long line of potential predators who come knocking on our door. 7.30's here. Here he's coming in. And as you'll see, some seem prepared to do things that police find quite disturbing. The one that bothered me the most was the guy that showed up with rope and duct tape in his vehicle.
When we return, you'll meet that man. What was he really planning? You talk about using the rope in various sex acts with this 15-year-old girl. And later, no shirt, no pants, and nowhere to hide from our hidden cameras. Marvin, you're naked. To Catch a Predator continues in a moment. He went down to the triangle at Avocado and made a right, so he's either circling back down a scale and coming up Riverside. On the first day alone, ten men show up at our undercover house in Fort Myers, Florida, where supposedly a young teen is home by herself and ready to have sex. Here he comes, here he comes. Copy that. Wave him up. Get him in. This is Brian Gosselin, screen name Bay Jones. Hey, come on in, the door's open. He's here to meet a girl who said online she was 15. He lied to her about his age, claiming to be 24. He's really 32. And based on what he had to say online, want to blank my brains out, it's not hard to guess why he's here. I got some wine coolers. Wine coolers are just fine. Hey, you weren't kidding when you said a big house. I know, the house is beautiful. I love my house. Yeah. Are you the only child? Yeah. Oh, did you bring, did you bring protection? Yeah. Perfect. The only bad news about that is you're probably not going to need that type of protection tonight. See, I knew this was going to be a setup. You did? Yeah. How did you know that? Just because of the way she was talking online. Brian, what's your last name? I don't have a last name. You don't have a last name. And that's about all he's willing to say. I just leave. I guess no, I'm no, no, I'm not finished I'm not asking questions here. yet. Sir? I'm not wanted here. 730's here. But most men who show up at our house are willing to talk. He is on the steps, opening the door. Like this man, 30 year old Kenneth Fortin. Watch it, he's coming fast. He's in the kitchen, call out. Hey, I'm in here! He's been chatting online with a decoy posing as a 15-year-old. He describes detailed plans for their sexual rendezvous. He says he likes to start with oral sex. After that, he asks her what position she'd like to try first. And he also asks if he can do more. Can I tie you up? You got, like, ropes and stuff? Yeah, I work construction, so I have all kinds of stuff. But if you like rope, I'll bring rope. So did he actually bring rope? Hey, I'm about to put on my bra and panties. Come on in. Keep going. He's coming fast. Rob, go ahead. Chris has him. How you doing? All right. How are you? you have a seat over in that chair, please? He says he's here to meet a girl, but he can't remember her name. And he's a little vague about her age. Rather young. Rather young. As in? 15 or 16. 15. And how old are you? 30. And it's okay for a 30-year-old man to come to a home where a 15-year-old girl is alone. Why? No, it's not okay. During their online chat, they talked about condoms. He also said he'd bring marijuana. Did you bring condoms with you? No. Not in your car? No. Did you bring marijuana? No. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. But is he telling the truth? We'll find out later when police search his car. But now he does admit to bringing one thing. Did you bring rope with you tonight? I have rope in my car. You have rope in your car? Yes, for my job. You talk about using the rope in various sex acts with this 15-year-old girl. What would have happened if a 15-year-old girl was here and I wasn't? Same thing that's happening now, just talking. Do you see why that's very difficult for me to believe, based on this chat? Yes, I do. That's the guy's honest truth, though. But I why should I believe I, that? Because I have a six-year-old daughter that I'm trying to see. You have a six-year-old daughter. Yeah. How would you feel if a stranger I hate, came I into you, know. your home? I'd hate it. <laughs> I'd hate it. So why then is it okay for you to come into this home where you thought a girl was alone? Bad judgment. There seems to be a lot of bad judgment in the air. Said he's making the turn. He's ner nervous. He's a brother that's call out, call out. Hey, come on in! He heard, put the soap on. Awesome, back away. He's opening the door. He's in the laundry room. Zanny? Here comes 22-year-old Elias Balon, screen name Daytona 02, a small business owner. He's been chatting online with a girl posing as a 14-year-old named Lainey. She asks him if he'll bring her vodka and let her drive his car. He says, whatever you want, sweetie. And when Lainey tells him her bedroom is hot, he types, you hot, mommy? Let's make love. He drove two and a half hours to get here. It's just before one o'clock in the morning. TV for a little bit, I'll be right out. 
Where are you? Oh, I'm just changing my shirt real quick because I got chocolate on it. Just take a seat. I'll be right there. I made you some cookies. Did you bring me my drinks? Can you come out? Yeah, I'll be right there. I just got to change. Why don't you do me a favor and come on in. Will you bring your stuff in? It looks as if Daytona 02 has come bearing gifts. What have we got here? A rose. A rose? What about condoms? Did you bring condoms? Yes, sir. You did. Why don't you put those on the table? No, I said I carried them. In. So you brought a rose, alcohol, and some condoms. What does that add up to? I know, sir. Then he reveals something we didn't know. I knew if something would happen like this, I would get in trouble because I'm married. You're married? <laughs> yes, sir. That's not what you said in the chat. No, no, I didn't say that. I didn't yeah. say that. No, but I'm married. <laughs> you are married. <laughs> yes, sir. But I really love her. The thing is that they think that we don't get along sometimes. Now, what do you think she would say if she knew that you were coming here to have sex with a 14-year-old girl? She would kill me. <sighs> I don't want to think about it. She would kill me. Yes, sir. I would get a divorce. Oh, her dad has ten brothers. Ten brothers. They would kill me. They'll all be looking for you. <sighs> Daytona O2 says he knew he was taking a big risk and worried this might be a setup. You say this might be a trap. I've seen that on TV. <laughs> yeah. What did you see on TV exactly? Uh, that. Well, in the news, actually, because the people get, like, uh, arrested because of chatting, like, with underage girls. Right. So you saw it on Dateline NBC? Yeah, yeah, news. Just news. Yeah. I didn't, oh, my God, I didn't think I was going to have it. He still doesn't appear to know he's landed in the middle of a Dateline investigation, but he'll find out a little later. Okay, he's in the driveway. Battle station, coming in, everybody. This is him. It's Lee Greer. It's Lee Greer. It's Lee Greer, 74, our 1 o'clock. I know who it is. Now, here comes another married man. He's 31-year-old Lee Greer, screen name Lee Greer 74. He's away from home on business, and he's been chatting online with a 13-year-old. At least that's what the decoy told him. He sends her a picture of his penis and then types, you will get to see the real thing you know in person. He's on the back door, his porch opening the door. He's supposed to be bringing lunch and booze. Hey, come on! Often, perverted justice decoys will ask a man to bring something specific, like food or alcohol. Ask if you brought the lunch and booze. Did you bring the food? Yeah. Okay, great. Law enforcement says it helps show intent, because a potential predator is bringing items that he talked about online in the same conversation he's talking about sex. What did you bring? Double cheeseburgers with no pickles. Awesome. I made chocolate chip cookies too, but I actually just got some of my shirt, so I'm just going to change my shirt real quick. All right, I got some fries, but the fries might be cold. It took me a little while to find this place. You can just take a seat. I'll be right there. Okay. So no uh, cookies for you? What's going on? Not much. Who are you? Who are you? Um, Lee. And Lee, what are you doing here? I uh, come to visit a friend off the net, I thought. At first, he tells me the friend he came to see was 18 or older, but then changes his story. So why don't you start over again and tell me how old did she say she was in the conversation? 13. How old are you? <laughs> Too old. 31. 31. Yes, sir. And you thought it was okay for a 31-year-old man to come to a home no, where sir. a 13-year-old girl was alone because why exactly? I didn't. Then why did you do it? Stupidity. Stupidity. Honestly. I was... God. Pure stupidity. You sent her that picture. Yes. Right. And I told her they were dirty pictures and she wanted to see them, so I showed them. Was, so, because a 13-year-old girl says it's okay, it's okay for you to do no, it? No, it's not, sir. No, sir. Are you married? Yes, sir. How's this going to go over at home? Not good. <laughs> I'd really, really, really like for it not to go home. Really, I mean, sir. What do you think should happen to you, Liam? Honestly, I'd like to be able to just go back to work. And just go back to work. Just walk, get up and I'm, grab I'm a not, cookie I'm and not walk saying out that, I'm not saying what I've what I done is right because I know it's wrong. I'm admitting to you that it is wrong. So we're all square, even Stephen, and you should no, just get no, up and walk out no, of here. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Honestly. 
Well, there's a few things that you need to know. As we told you before, he won't get off that easy. Everything that you've done since you pulled up here has been recorded on camera. Oh, Lord. Neither will the next potential predators you're about to meet. Where are you? Coming up, he's the father of two teenage children, but that didn't stop him from making a date with our decoy, posing as another teen. What was your plan here with this 14-year-old boy? I mean, we talked about sex and stuff like that. And then sure did. When to catch a predator continues. During our undercover investigation here in Fort Myers, Florida, there's been a steady stream of potential predators arriving to keep their dates with someone who told them they were a young teen. There we go. Now we're back. Ten men the first day and 11 men on the second day. And there's still one more day to go. Approaching the back door. He's uh, coming through. Some come looking not for girls, but for boys. Meet 23-year-old Ryan McIntosh, screen name QX4Boy19. He owns a high-end dog boutique. He's here to meet a boy who told him online he was 14. The decoy says, you won't tell anyone I'm gay, will you? And QX4Boy19 replies, if you don't tell anybody, you blanked my blank. Dell from Perverted Justice, playing the male decoy, invites him in and scoots behind the door before he sees her. We'll watch you hear something. I'll be right back out, all right? All right. Why don't you uh, make yourself at home here? Have a seat. What's going on? Not much on you. Like many other men caught in our investigations, QX for Boy 19 insists he didn't come here for sex with a young teen. I was just going over to hang out, and I felt like I'd be more big brother more than anything. I do big know. brother? Yeah, so you're coming over to be a mentor? In a way, yes. And I'm sure you've heard that 20 billion times. 20 billion and one, counting to nine. I had no intention of having sex with him tonight. What were you going to do? Just hang out. But his chat log doesn't make it sound like he was just here to hang out. You talk about penis size, whether he's got pubic hair. Mm -hmm. You say you're horny. You say you're masturbating while you're talking to him. You talk about hooking up and you say, if you don't tell anybody, you f my c I said that? You, and then you say, I don't want to go to jail. Do you recall that conversation? I'm sorry I didn't say that. I mean, the issue here is not gay or straight. No. The issue here is adult child. In the mentoring conversation that you're saying to me that you were going to have tonight with the 14 year old, that's not what well, you're saying. Well, I didn't think I was going to have that con conversation tonight. I, just, I was going to just come out and hang out and, and see what he's like. QX for Boy 19 sits and talks to me for more than 10 minutes. Then amazingly, when I start to tell him who I am, well, I gotta tell you, he I'm already knows. I know. And we're, you know. Have you seen the previous stories? You have. And as you'll hear later, the possibility of walking into a Dateline investigation wasn't enough to stop him. Here comes another man who's seen our previous broadcast. He's in the laundry room. He's in the kitchen, coming towards the living room. His name is Dallas Lee. He's been chatting online in an AOL gay chat room with a boy posing as a 14-year-old. It takes him less than seven minutes to ask the boy if he wants oral sex. The decoy says, okay, cool. And a few hours later, he's walking oh, yeah. into our living room. Yeah. I'm finishing it right. Hang out the table for a second, okay? Yeah. So you're pumped too, huh? Yeah. So what were you so uh, pumped for? No, not too much. Do you have a seat right on the uh, stool there? What you doing here? He invited me over. Who is he? Uh, Tony. Tony. Yeah. And how old is Tony? Mm, 14. What was your plan here with this 14-year-old boy? I mean, we talked about sex and stuff like that. And then you sure did. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. i got two kids of my own. We can hang out and stuff. And how old are your kids? My son is 19 and my daughter is 15. So your daughter is one year older than the boy you were coming mm -hmm. to visit tonight? Mm hmm Now, how would you feel if your daughter, at the age of 15, was home alone and a man came to visit her? Honestly, terrible. Yeah. You know. And so why is it okay for you... It's not. You're absolutely right. Honestly, it's not. You know, but I, I was even, not even set the sex aside. 
He says he knows it looks bad, but he really wanted to be a father figure to the boy who told him he didn't have a dad. But if that's so, why did he tell the boy he was 20 years old when he's really 40? Why, if you're trying why to be lie? a father figure to this kid, as you have suggested to me you were right. trying to do, why would you tell him you were 20 and much closer to his age? Right. That's, that's a mistake. as though somebody would do that exactly. if, in fact, and they see, wanted the target exactly. to think they were younger that. and be comfortable to have sex. I understand. I understand what you're right? coming from. He also understands something else. As you sit here today, based on this chat, based upon up. your arrival here, mm -hmm. you are every parent's worst nightmare. Exactly. I understand what you're saying. You're right. I guarantee you it's never going to happen again. He's coming in, walking. And there's still another man who comes to the house four. claiming he's really here yes, to help. Six. Bottom step in the laundry room. Where are you? I'm right here. I got fish can change. I'll be right there. He's 61-year-old Thomas Campbell, J1H3120. He's been chatting online with a decoy posing as a 14-year-old. He graphically describes how he likes to give oral sex to young men. The decoy asks, is that like your favorite to do? And J1H3120 says, yep. And from what most say, it's the best they've had. No, where are you at? I'm right here. I just got to get a change. <laughs> Sorry, man. I didn't mean to confuse you. Right. Moving pretty quick there. Why don't you have a seat right over there? Okay. At the stool. Where were you headed there? Huh? Where were you headed just Just then? talk with him. Just talk with who? Tony. Online, he lists his age as being in his 40s. At first, he tells me he's only 49. Later, we learn the truth. I'm 61. You're 61. So you're not in your 40s? Like no. The man starts to have a bit of an asthma attack. Just relax. He uses his inhaler and says he's fine. Then he tells me he had a tough time growing up gay and wanted to help the young boy he expected to be here. To help him see that it's not really the shameful situation that it was when, when I was younger. So you were here to mentor this boy? If I could, yeah. If I could, you know, I, I don't mind helping. And did that mentoring process include having sex with him? Oh, no. But that's not how the conversation went on the internet, is it? I don't think so. I don't know. You say, I love to a young man, deep and him. Okay. Do you recall that? I, I believe so. This was... Well, I have the whole transcript here. A few so. days ago. Yeah. Yep, and from what most say, it's the best they've had. The real compliment is when they keep coming back for more. You'd absolutely love it. I'm in my 40s, but guarantee that I'm not some old guy wanting to perv a young boy. Well, the reality is, is that you are older. Uh -huh. And what's going on here seems pretty pervy, doesn't it? It does. A total of 24 men show up at the house, are arrested, and thrown in jail. But first, they'll find out they're going to be on national television. Coming up, excuse after excuse. Never have I met anyone underage. I will swear on my mother's grave. And arrest after arrest. Please, this is a mistake. Then later, our undercover cameras capture an image that's overexposed. You want to explain yourself? When To Catch a Predator continues. They're stalking the chat rooms, then knocking on the door. Welcome back to our latest investigation into computer sex predators. Tonight, we return to Fort Myers, Florida, where we've rented a home and equipped it with 13 hidden cameras. Over the course of three days, two dozen men arrived at the undercover house. Most all the men we met had an excuse and some explaining to do. Here again, Chris Hansen. He's coming around. The men walking through our door range in age from 20 to 61 and come from very different backgrounds. But most of them say almost the same thing when I confront them. So this is the first time you've ever done something like this? Oh, yeah. This is All my time. first time. This is my first one. She's the first person I ever considered meeting. I never done this lady. You know, I hear that from virtually every person who has walked into this house. I never have. Never have I met anyone underage. I will swear on my mother's grave, never. And there's something else I hear over and over. 
Did you bring condoms today? I, I always carry them on me. Did you bring condoms with you? I always carry condoms with me. I have them, yeah. I always carry them. I just carry everywhere with me. There's some in the car. Just happen to be some in the glove box. No, I always have condoms anywhere I go. A person would have to be an idiot not to because of diseases. While most are willing to talk when they don't know they're being recorded on hidden camera. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story about adults meeting teens on the Internet. And just like this man, a mental health counselor for teenagers, when the cameras come out, the potential predators often scurry. I'm not going to be on TV. You're obviously free to walk right out of the door that you came in. I would like to walk out. I still want my face to be. Okay. And he's not the only one. Remember the married man who said his wife would kill him if she knew what he was up to? I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. If there's anything else you'd like to tell us, we'd like to hear it. I just made a mistake. And I won't do it again. For sure. And then there were the men who had already seen some of our Dateline computer predator investigations. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Hello. You know. Have you seen the previous stories? You have. And what was your impression of the, of the earlier stories? Nothing. They were very good coverage. Good coverage? They were good coverage. I seen one previous movie uh, a month ago. Okay. And that didn't make you think twice about coming over here to meet a 14-year-old? No. It wasn't coming over to have sex on the site. We weren't doing anything with him. I was just coming to talk to him. And because he's seen a previous broadcast, he remembers what happens next. I'm walking out and doing the cops up out there. That's not, that's not up to me. <laughs> no, yes. Okay, thank you. And just as he suspected, the police are waiting to arrest him. Get down. Get down. down. Get down. Here's another man, Dallas Lee, who saw one of our broadcasts and still showed up. He came to meet a Tony. boy posing as a 14-year-old. How old is Tony? You ever watch Dateline NBC? Sometimes, yes. I've seen that. You've seen the computer predator stories? Yeah. Well, this is one of them. <laughs> Lovely. And there's more bad news for him when he gets outside. An officer wearing a type of camouflage to hide in the bushes jumps out and arrests him. Police officer, on the ground! On the ground! As soon as the men leave our house, police work quickly and sometimes aggressively taking the suspects down to the ground. That's because in Florida, it's relatively easy to get a permit to carry a concealed weapon. So these officers aren't taking any chances. Anybody get hurt no. in the takedowns? No, uh, 24 people and no one was injured. All the officers are safe. Let me see your hand. Oh, Lord. As a man is being arrested, an unmarked police vehicle moves into position. The suspect is put into a car and taken to a transfer station. This is the married man, Lee Greer, who hoped his wife would never know that he showed up for a date with a girl who told him she was 13. How's this going to go over at home? I had really, really, really like for it not to go home. Oh, my God. We got it. We probably have some Arkansas. Arkansas? You're on vacation at home? No, I'm down here working. His picture is taken. Thank you. And when the police search his rental car, they start collecting evidence. He's supposed to bring condoms, booze, and lunch. He's yeah. coming around back. And remember that man, Kenneth Fortin, who online asked a girl claiming to be 15 if he could tie her up? Look what the police find in his car. So there's rope. There's rope. There's duct tape and extension cords. He did admit to me that he had rope in his car, but he denied bringing anything else. Did you bring condoms with you? No. No. Not in your car? No. Did you bring marijuana? No. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Turns out he wasn't telling me the truth. I think I need narcotics on you, sir. The police find the marijuana. What do you got going with you? No, but a weed. And a box of condoms. We get on the ground. Get on the ground. All of the 24 men who were arrested outside our house were charged with felonies, attempted lewd and lascivious behavior with a minor, and attempting to solicit a child over the Internet. David Schumacher. They all went before a judge, and bail was set. There's probable cause on all the charges. There's a $50,000 bond. Many say they are innocent, but they will have to wait to be arraigned before they can plead not guilty, including the next man you're about to meet. Online, he's very clear about what he wants to do with the underage girl and what he does when he shows up 
will be hard for you to believe. You want to explain yourself? Grab that towel right there, please. Wrap it around yourself, and please sit in that stool. It was also hard for officers to believe that strange encounter is coming up next. You're naked, there's a 14-year-old girl, you're chasing a cat around, you've got Cool Whip. To Catch a Predator continues in a moment. What are you driving? So I know I'm gonna look for you. A white pickup truck? Okay. I'll see you soon then, okay? A perverted justice decoy is playing the part of a 14-year-old named Cindy. She's talking to this man, Marvin Lackhand, screen name Crazy Trini 85. They met in an online chat room. Cindy tells him she's a virgin, and he sends her a picture of his genitals. Crazy Trini 85 asks her if she'll try anal sex and adds, it's better than regular sex. Then he asks her if she has a jacuzzi. I'm a you in there. And on your mom's bed? Why not my bed? That too. <laughs> I'm a you in every room, so no matter where you go, you will remember me. Next, he asks her if she has any pets. Cindy says she has a male cat. And you won't believe what crazy Trini85 asks next. You know what would be a huge turn on for me? What? He wants to watch her perform a sex act on a cat. He says people do it all the time. They discuss it further on the phone, where he tells her they'll need Cool Whip. The decoy says she'll try it if he's willing to strip off all his clothes and walk into her house naked. That's him right there. He's pulling in the driveway. As we told you before, according to law enforcement, asking a suspect to bring or do something specific demonstrates intent. There's like a green thing over the back door. The decoy keeps talking to him as he walks up the driveway. I'm going to find my cat quick, okay? Just strip in there and I'll be out with the cat. All right? He's coming around. Okay, yeah. Just, like, whatever you want. I guess totally naked because that was a deal, right? This is a man who apparently sticks to a deal. He walks in the back door, takes off all his clothes in the laundry room, and goes in search of the decoy. Where are you? You want to explain yourself? Grab that towel right there, please. Wrap it around yourself, and please sit in that stool. What are you doing? Making a mistake. Making a mistake? What is going on in your mind? You don't know. Now, what do you think would have happened, Marvin? Had I not been here, and had there actually been a 14-year-old girl in that next room, what would have happened after you walked in there naked? Something probably would have happened. Something like what? Something along sexual lines. Like you would have had sex with a 14-year-old girl? I'm not sure if I would have done that, but... Marvin, you're naked. I wouldn't have gone all the way. I wasn't going... You, were, you went all the way when you took your clothes off, just about. Then I asked him about the plans he talked about online for the cat. You know what would be a huge turn on for me. What? Watching you blank him, meaning the cat. She says, I don't think I want to blank the cat. Would you, for me, you're going to make this 14-year-old girl perform a sex act on a cat. Was that your plan? No, it wasn't. Well, why did you say it then? I was, I was, I was just messing around with it. I wasn't you're just messing serious. around? I really wasn't serious about the cat. You gave her instructions about using Cool Whip. Very specific instructions. I mean, I can only imagine what would have been going on in this house had I not been here. Am I wrong to think that? No, you're not. So what's going to be happening if I'm not here? You're naked, there's a 14-year-old girl, you're chasing a cat around, you've got Cool Whip, and you want this girl to do some sex act with the cat and then you'll have sex with her. Is that accurate? Yes. Then Crazy Trini 85 asks for some water. Some water? Yes, please. I saw that running around naked got you pretty uh, dried out there, huh? Yeah. Uh, 
Have you ever met any young girls online? First time. Yeah, this is the first time, which will never happen again. I can tell you that. The now. nearly naked man starts laughing. So it's funny. No, this is, I'm just thinking it to myself that this would never happen again. <laughs> this is not something, though. This is not right. <laughs> so you're promising me right now that you'll never... I'm promising myself that I'm not... Hook up with a 14-year-old girl online, tell her to have sex with a cat, and walk into her house naked. Not, not even under 19. <laughs> I'm just... It's, no. I'm promising that to myself, not even to you, just to... This is not good. <laughs> Now he's about to find out that he just made that promise on national television. Well, there's something else you need to know. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to meet teens online. Yes, sir. Now, if there's anything else you'd like to say about this predicament you're now in, we'd love to hear it. Just trust me, it'll never happen again. And if there's nothing else you have to say, then you're free to walk out that door where you stripped naked and walked in. You can keep the towel. I'll just leave it in the laundry room. That's fine. Once he gets his clothes back on, he walks outside and is arrested by that camouflaged officer. Police on the ground! He's taken to the transfer station and searched. Where you legs? Where do you live at? In for Ohio. When you're on business or what? No, I'm just being stupid. Just being stupid. Yeah. He's photographed and then taken to jail. This is the person apparently walked into the room naked. The next day, he's brought before a judge and bail is set. That does come out to fifty thousand dollars, and that's all for today. Thank you, Judge. So what's next for these men? Find out when we come back. Chris Hansen joins us. And Chris Hansen joins us now. Chris, these investigations this month have just drawn a huge response, thousands and thousands of emails. And, and one question we're consistently hearing is, why are all of these suspected predators men? Not a single woman. Is there a reason for that? We just haven't seen any women in our investigations. The experts say that there are women predators. They just go after kids they know. They're more comfortable with that. Male predators like the anonymity and the other accessibility offered by the Internet. You know, we've heard some other viewers uh, say that they think someone in their community may be a, a, a predator. Don't know what to do. What can you tell them? Don't try and do a sting operation by yourself. The FBI office locally, the police, sheriff's department, they're all very receptive to this kind of crime, and they'll do something about it. Are there other options, I mean, short of jail? I and mean, what about treatment for some of these? Prison these and punishment is critical stone, but the experts tell us that there has to be more treatment options out there for when these guys get out of prison, because there's a chance they'll reoffend. And without that, we're really not going to find a solution to this problem. So look at both both potential solutions. There's there. no one-size-fits-all solution to this. There has to be punishment and there has to be treatment. Chris Hansen, thanks. Thanks, Tom. Of course, the reason we've been doing these stories over the past few weeks is to bring home to families the real dangers predators pose on the Internet. As we've mentioned, there are many things parents can do, from monitoring children's Internet use to installing special software on your computer. You'll find a complete online safety kit on our website. The address is dateline.msnbc.com. That's all for now. I'm Stone Phillips for Ann Curry and all of us at NBC News. Thanks for watching.